All right, then the last video we did a polynomial inequality. Here we have a rational inequality. So um, we're going to use a, almost the exact same method uh, to be able to solve this. So now the most important thing, just like with the polynomials, is that we are comparing to zero. And in this case we already are. Now the next thing is that these have to be fully factored is we have to we have to look at them in parts. Now once we do that, we can look at the numerator and then the denominator sort of separately to find our critical values. So to find our critical values, we're going to take the x plus 2 and let's set it equal to 0. And we're going to take the x minus 5 and set it equal to 0. So if we solve each one of these, we have x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 5. These are the places that are going to sort of separate our graph out and tell us what's happening, which, one, which areas are um, greater than 0, which ones are less than 0. So let's look at this again as a number line. And we're going to mark off, let's say negative 2 is here, and we'll say 5 is right over here. So our different regions of the graph, we're, it's, it's almost as if we're separating it out into a left side, a middle, and then a right side. Okay, within each one of these regions, we're going to choose a number to sort of test. So over here, maybe let's pick a, a negative 5. And in between here, we could pick 0. And then over here, maybe a, um, a 10. Just, it doesn't matter, just something that is um, in that area. Now we're going to look at each one of the pieces, the x plus 2 first. If I were to plug in anything to the left of negative 2, like say negative 5, negative 5 plus 2 would be a negative number. If I plugged in a 0, 0 plus 2 would be a positive number. And to the right, if I chose 10, 10 plus 2 would be a positive number. Now let's see what happens with the other factor, the x minus 2. I'm sorry, the x minus 5, rather. So sorry. If I were to plug in a negative 5, negative 5 minus 5 would be a negative number. If I put in a 0, 0 minus 5 would be a negative number. And if I put a 10 in there, 10 minus 5 would be a positive number. Now let's look at the combination of those. Our problem really and truly had x plus 2 divided by x minus 5. So if I were to divide a negative divided by a negative, that would be a positive. If I took a positive divided by a negative, that would be negative. And a positive divided by positive would be positive. Now we're going to choose the areas that make our statement true. Our statement said that this division has to be greater than or equal to zero. That means they are positive. So we want this area and this area. So now to write that out, we would say starting at the left, this would be negative infinity all the way up to negative two. Negative infinity always gets a parenthesis, but we have to decide what to do with the negative 2. Negative 2 is going to get a bracket because this says greater than or equal to 0. So because there's equality, negative 2 um, is an included point. Now we're going to join that with everything in this area over here, which would start at 5 and go all the way to infinity. Well, infinity gets a parenthesis automatically, but in this case, 5 also gets a parenthesis because 5, if you'll remember looking up at our rational expression, 5 is a hole in the domain. So this 5 is actually an asymptote and it cannot be included. So you're really going to have to think about a lot of things here. Now, if we wanted to check that really quickly, we could look at the picture. And do you see that our graph is above the x-axis all the way over here to about negative 2? And then over here from our asymptote of 5 to infinity, it's also above the x-axis or positive.